Welcome to Blenderized Tube Feeding Makes a Comeback, Indications in Adult Enteral Patients. I'm your host, Dr. Teresa Johnson, professor at Troy University and a registered dietitian nutritionist with over 30 years in clinical practice. After this presentation, the participant should be able to state the indications for blenderized tube feeding in adult populations, relate clinical outcomes, and explain appropriate use of BTF in inpatient and outpatient settings, and consider the economic impact of using a real food blend. Blenderized food tube feeding may be used for patients who cannot tolerate semi-synthetic formulas or who wish to consume whole foods. A BTF may be 100% blended food, a baby food blend, or a partial blend made by adding food to a commercial formula to alleviate the symptoms of diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, constipation, reflux, and volume intolerance all associated with tube feeding intolerance. BTF may be used to meet weight and growth goals. Some tube-fed patients or their caregivers desire BTF because it provides diet diversity that cannot be achieved with a standard polymeric formula. These patients desire a more physiologic feeding that includes beneficial plant phytochemicals. Finally, BTF may be selected when manipulation of a single micro or macronutrient is warranted. For example, a tube-fed patient who needs a low iodine diet to prepare for radioactive iodine ablation treatment, or a tube-fed patient with intolerance or allergy to an ingredient that would be common to a commercial formula. These are examples of patients who would benefit from BTF. With the availability of commercially prepared BTF, a whole foods blend based tube feeding is appropriate for almost every condition and setting where a standard polymeric commercial formula would be used. These include any adult patient expected to remain on tube feeding in varied conditions and disease states, as well as the hospital, long-term care, and outpatient settings. The message of dietary variety and health benefits of plant-based diets has resonated with the tube feeding population. Also, many tube fed patients and their caregivers find the ability to consume normal food gives them some autonomy and normalcy that's been challenged by their medical condition. Commercial formula may be perceived like another medication treatment compared to consuming real food. Blending the family meal could help the patient feel less alienated at mealtimes. We are only beginning to understand the benefits of phytochemicals on the gut microbiome and the implications this has for overall health. However, we do have several studies linking a diverse diet, particularly plant-based diets, to optimal gut microbiome. A healthy gut microbiota is associated with reduction in cardiovascular disease, a reduction in inflammatory bowel disease, reduced incidence of food allergies, and improved mental health outcomes. Recent research in patients transitioned from commercial enteral formula to BTF found that a blenderized tube feeding induced a healthy and diverse microbiome compared to commercial enteral formula feeding. Someday we may actually use foods to manipulate the microbiome to optimize health outcomes. In the future, we may actually use foods in customized enteral plans to manipulate the microbiome for a desired treatment outcome. We have a handful of studies from the US, Canada, and the UK exploring reasons that the demand for BTF has emerged in the last two decades. One theme is consistent. The desire for BTF is patient and caregiver driven. In our own survey of 430 parents of tube fed children, about half reported that they used BTF and about half used a commercial enteral formula. The parents opting for BTF, whether full or partial, wanted their children to have food instead of highly processed, monotonous commercial formula. 
They used BTF to address tube feeding intolerance, and some used BTF to help their children transition to oral feeding. Additional reported benefits were reduced expense, treating allergies, and to help reach weight gain goals. Many of the parents using commercial formula reported they didn't know about BTF or they didn't have support from the medical community to use it. The most worrisome finding from our study was that less than half of the parents feeding their children blenderized food were followed by a competent health care provider. They indicated they couldn't find someone informed about BTF or they couldn't find someone who was supportive of their decision and they were winging it with help from online resources. As healthcare professionals, we recommend dietary guidelines for Americans for patients. But can a tube-fed patient benefit from these guidelines as well? I mentioned earlier on some of the improvements in feeding tolerance that patients experience when transitioning from formula-only diets to BTF. This graphic summarizes mounting evidence that patients on blenderized diets experience improvements in reflux, bloating, gagging, and retching. They have reduced diarrhea, constipation, nausea, and vomiting, and increased volume tolerance. BTF is associated with improved transition to oral intake in appropriate patients. BTF improves intestinal biodiversity and decreased healthcare use, including GI medications, hospital admissions, and visits to the emergency department. BTF is appropriate in every setting that a commercial formula feeding would be utilized, including home, work, acute, and long-term care settings. Just as the dietary guidelines are adaptable across all settings of care, so is BTF. However, as with all nutrition support, there are considerations for use. What are potential contraindications for BTF? Although there's some disagreement on the minimum age to introduce blenderized tube feeding, we suggest that patients less than nine months of age are not candidates, and it's important to adjust for prematurity. The same steps for introducing complementary food to babies applies to BTF. For example, blenderized tube feeding should only supplement and not replace formula or breast milk through the first year of life. Guidelines for feeding progression in the first year also apply to BTF. Medically unstable patients, immune compromised, and those with complex metabolic issues have traditionally not been considered candidates for BTF. However, they may thrive using a commercial version of a whole food blend product. NG, NJ, and J tube fed patients should be placed on formula as commercial formula is less likely to clog the tube and J-tube fed patients are usually not given bolus feedings. Again, a commercially prepared whole food blend may be selected in these cases. At least a 14 French size tube is recommended for these thicker formulas. Patients requiring continuous feeding are not candidates for BTF because food should not remain at room temperature for more than two hours. However, again, some commercially prepared BTF products can hang for 8 or as much as 12 hours. Of particular importance is the ability of the patient or caregiver to demonstrate capacity for safe BTF feeding if a commercial blend is not used. A high quality blender, adequate storage, time commitment, and demonstration of safe food handling techniques are all critical. Healthcare providers will need to help patients transition to BTF, troubleshoot issues, and assess patients frequently to assure nutrition needs and goals are achieved. Some have compared the cost of a standard polymeric formula to a whole food blend and dismissed the latter as more expensive, but this ignores a bigger picture. Traditionally, when two fed patient demonstrates tube feeding intolerance, healthcare providers switch to a more expensive hydrolyzed formula. They may transition from bolus to a continuous feed, which requires the addition of a pump for consistent delivery. They may add GI medications, and even as a last resort, go to a surgical intervention such as a fundoplication. 
However, shifting from a standard polymeric formula first to a whole food blend may negate the need for costlier interventions illustrated on the slide. Gallagher safely transitioned children with short gut from continuous hydrolyzed feeding to a commercial blended tube feeding. In addition to cost savings from a less expensive formula, GI medication use was significantly reduced in these patients. In another study of critically ill post-stroke adult patients fed by tube in the ICU, Schmidt demonstrated that a commercial blend reduced diarrhea and the need for additional medications. The cost savings of BTF may be realized through indirect measures as well. A study by Hron demonstrated reduced overall medical costs with BTF compared to CF fed patients. This was over the course of one year. The BTF patients had less hospital admissions, reduced length of stay when they were admitted, reduced respiratory illness and infection, and fewer visits to the emergency department compared to the commercially fed formula group. Healthcare providers may encounter facility policies prohibiting the use of BTF. However, policies that counter effective patient-centered care should always be addressed. Clinicians and quality management staff should be educated on the benefits of commercial BTF so that policies can be put into place for its use. A commercial BTF confers singular advantages in the hospital setting in that it is readily available less labor intense to prepare, less expensive, and sanitation is assured. As with most all procurement changes, multiple stakeholders are involved, including purchasing departments, vendors, medical providers, and coders. These will need to be consulted to get a commercial BTF on the formulary. To summarize from the published literature we have available to us, BTF results in improved tolerance in children and adults of various patient populations. BTF has clinical utility in all patient care settings and varied medical conditions. Outcomes are better when healthcare provider oversight is given. Blenderized tube feeding may be the only option in selected cases where a single dietary component needs to be targeted or manipulated. Finally, even though commercial formula costs are typically covered by medical plans and BTF might not be covered, the latter may still reduce overall health care costs associated with adverse GI conditions that dissipate when a real food feeding is provided. Dr. James Barron developed the first hospital feeding pump in the 1950s. It delivered pureed foods through a tube to his patients. Although some proposed that a commercially prepared substrate would be better, Dr. Barron and his colleagues at Henry Ford Hospital advocated the use of a whole food blend, stating, natural food provides excellent sources of protein, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, plus all other discovered and yet to be discovered essential nutrients. Accumulating evidence stresses more and more the complexity of a nutritional, needs of the human body. Up to the present time, we know of no manufactured preparation which can surpass or even equal natural foods. Dr. Barron's words ring true today, 70 years after he spoke them. As healthcare providers, we mustn't assume that parents and patients are not up to the task of BTF. We posted a simple question on the website of BTF users and registered dietitians who endorse it in their clinical practices. That question was, why do you use BTF? In addition to reports of improved feeding tolerance, within 48 hours of posting this question, we had over 100 responses with additional themes that emerged and are summarized in these comments. Formula feeding is like taking one more medication. Blending makes me feel like a human again. I can be a part of family meals. I have so many medical issues and so little control over my life. Blending lets me at least have control over what I eat. I'm 25 years old with a neuromuscular disorder called spinal muscular atrophy and I require total care. 
The way I see it, if I was eating by mouth, the people who assist me would be cooking food daily for me. Blending is no different. And there are plenty of ways to make it easier, just like cooking for people who eat by mouth, such as weekly meal prep. And finally, a dietitian quipped, why do we need permission to feed a patient real food? Indeed, perhaps real food should be our first go-to product for tube-fed patients. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope that you found this information helpful. This educational offering was provided to you by Aspen and supported by an educational grant provided by Real Food Blends.